time, ex-police officer David Speed is to be submitted to the supreme test. This will make the fourth time the state has tried to execute him. He's been sentenced to death for the murder of his friend, colleague, and superior officer, Sergeant Willie Dunlop. Never before in the penal history of this country has a man survived three attempts to execute him. First time was the gas chamber, but Dave breathed in the cyanide like it was pure, pollution-free mountain air. The second attempt by the state to have Dave meet his maker was by hanging. But when Dave dropped, as you guessed it, the rope broke. Then it was the firing squad, but inexplicably not one single bullet even scratched Dave. Now he's going to get the chair. I'd like to see the son of a bitch get out of that. <laughs> now he's going to fry. Governor Simon Adamson was not available for comment. Yeah? It's for you, boss. And with elections in the fall. Oh, Rosie. It's all arranged. Don't worry. Nothing can go wrong this time. Sorry, lady, no visitors today. But I have an invitation signed by the governor. Hey, I don't care if it was signed by the president. The warden said not to let in any complimentary passes. But don't you recognize me? I'm Rosie LaBouche. The condemned man and I were close. Real close. Lady, if you were the condemned man himself, I couldn't let you in. Well, could you at least see that he receives these flowers? Perhaps they could arrange them in front of the electric chair so he could see them. I want David to be thinking of me when they throw the switch. I'll see what I can do. Oh, you are so kind. Thank you so much. Mm. Mm. 
Hi, Joshua. Dave, that's the 14th plate of beans you've eaten. Would you like something to drink? You know, regulations say you can have champagne if you want it. Champagne? Hmm, gives me gas. Well, can I get you something else? Yeah, more beans. More beans? Mm-hmm. Could you make the zuki beans this time? A zuki beans? Oh, I never heard of them, but I guess you can get the cook to rustle some up. Mm, great. I'll have him for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> lunch? Hey, man. They're coming for you now. Oh, By yeah? the time lunchtime rolls around, you're going to be having dinner with hunky number one. Sarge, here we go again. There's no need to make your confession, my son. What earthly sins could you have committed since we last took this walk together the day before yesterday? Well, how about gluttony, Father? I'm sorry, Dave. Now, come along, my son. When all this first began, I never dreamt it would end like this. I had just come out of the police academy and gotten my first assignment. It seems like only yesterday. The nuclear rocket, which will get to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, will begin to plummet with pinpoint precision to a predetermined place on the Earth's surface. The purpose of the Red Plutonium mission is to test a top secret device for detecting minerals below the moon's crust. Now, gentlemen, the site selected for this momentous experiment is, namely, Creek Town, or as the Indians call it, Popok. Sergeant Dunlop had ordered me to go to Creek Town to collect a fine for a parking ticket. The village was in the middle of a swamp but I was hell-bent on carrying out my mission, no matter what. This is headquarters calling officer speed. Headquarters calling officer speed. Come in, officer speed. This is Sergeant Dunlop calling Officer Speed. Officer Speed, do you read me? Over. Oh, that was good thinking, Sergeant. Sending him across the glaze to creep down on the very day NASA's having the top secret experiments out there. Oh, that's really smart. Well, how was I to know that, Chief? I mean, you yourself just said it was top secret. What would have happened to the population of Popoke if the citizens hadn't been evacuated in time? Well, probably nothing, but the explosion of red plutonium will bombard the area with a barrage of harmless red omega rays, which will have the effect of fluoroscoping whatever lies underground. Jim O'Palaka? Mr. Jim O'Palaka? Hello? Anybody home? This is Officer Speed calling headquarters. Hey, Sergeant Dunlop. Dave! It's him! It's him! He's coming through on short way. We can hear him, but he can't hear us. It's a freak reception. Speed! Speed, you dumb rookie! Get back here right away! You're gonna get yourself killed! Get back here to headquarters, you hear me? This is urgent! Hey, it's really peaceful out here. Everything's wide open. I'm going to tack the ticket right to his totem pole. Assignment completed, over and out. <laughs> hey fella. Hey fella. Could you move over? 
of a rookie in his class, but he did die in the line of duty, trying to collect on a traffic violation. That poor kid. A little late to be feeling sorry, isn't it? But I'll tell you what, if it disturbs you that much, I've got just the job to take it off your mind. Officer Dunlop. got that cover back into place just by thinking about it. That was the minute I realized that something, something incredible had happened to me. To start with, we'll forget all that baloney you told the chief. As far as I'm concerned, you never went to that creek town. But I did go, Sarge. Then how come you never noticed all that hell that was breaking loose around you? I did. It was this huge explosion. How than I can do with my bubble. You what? Listen, don't give me that bubble stuff. Not even an ant could have survived in that explosion. <laughs> Why are you getting so mad? Sounds like you're sorry I'm still alive. Well, what do you expect? If a man gets caught in the middle of an atomic blast, the least he can do is drop dead. But I told you, Sarge. Everything turned bright red. It was this roaring sound, and the next thing I knew, I came to under a mountain of sand. Mountainous sand. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a revolting habit, and it's against regulations. And what's more, it turns my stomach. What does? Chewing gum. Any turkey that chews gum and blows bubbles is really at the top of my list, boy. Sorry, Sarge. Right there, you gotta put it. Oh, you dope. Sorry, Sarge. I mean, no offense. I'm one of Rosie LaBush's greatest fans. I've seen all her movies, even the silent ones. What do you mean, even the silent ones? Well, she's young enough to make that, 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 Cheryl Ladd and Farrah Fawcett look like a couple of plain Janes. You're really crazy about it, aren't you? Sure, I'm crazy about it. I'm not ashamed to admit it. <laughs> I ever tell you about the time I held her in my arms? Uh, that was a long time ago, in Hollywood. I was working as a stuntman on one of her films. Oh, boy, that's an experience I'll never forget. 
Watch it, Sarge! What the hell are you trying to do? Kill us? I didn't want you to hit the elephants. What elephants? did you know those elephants were going to cross in front of us? I didn't see them. That means you didn't either. I don't know. Intuition, I guess. Oh, yeah? So who's going to cross in front of us now, huh? Come on, give us a flash of that intuition. Come on. I can't. Elephants, yes. Nuns, no, huh? Ah. Huh? Hello, never mind about Dave and get me my laundry. Okay, I'll get you your Okay, see you later. Okay, bye. Now I knew it. I had superpowers. But they would come and go, and I couldn't figure out why. Answer the radio. Why? There's nobody calling us. This is headquarters calling car 40. Headquarters calling car 40. Come in, car 40. Intuition. Yeah, hey, this is uh, car 40. Come in, Tiger Lily. Get over to 1147 4th Street. We have a robbery in progress on the 20th floor in the offices of Johnson & Johnson. That's right across from the Daily Herald building. We're on our way. You know, you and this intuition are starting to get on my nerves, kid. <laughs> Don't move. Nobody move. Get over there. <laughs> yes, come on, get him up. Oh, hi, Sarge. Tell me, what's up? Oh, I don't know nothing. What's going on? Wouldn't you know it? They blocked them all. Now we gotta climb all that way. Come on. Me to take care of 
five more. You made it, Sarge. There it is. Now, here's what we're going to use. The old charge system. What's the charge system? It never fails. The old charge system. If you charge the door, and I'll cover you from the back here. Okay? I charge the door. You charge the door. I'm going to cover you from back here. Good thinking, Sarge. Okay. Check the door and see if anybody's coming. to my eyes to see a trick like that. Really? Grab his gun. I say, somebody better get an ambulance. That boy's gonna be hurt awful bad. Don't move or you'll end up like your buddy. Watch the door, there might be more cops. Hey, Sarge, you dropped your gun. Somebody up there sure likes you. If it hadn't been for that platform down there, huh, you'd have been splattered all over that sidewalk. Huh. But what took you so long in getting back up here? Ah, uh, forget it, Sarge. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me anyway. Uh, here. All right, get him up there! <laughs> what are you so happy about? Happy about the way we busted up that robbery. You stick with me, we're gonna go places. What now? There's illegal gambling going on in that truck. Gambling? Nobody move. We're under arrest. I called headquarters. Hey, listen, kid. Next time you get a tip-off like this, tell me before you act, will you? It wasn't a tip-off. I could see them inside the truck. Look, I don't want to know. I'm just your superior officer. From now on, you don't think, you don't act, you don't speak until you get it from me. You understand? Get your hands up there! Racing around in your car and catching crooks, aren't you? No. Well, then what are you thinking about? Well, I was just thinking how much I'd like to be alone with you right now. <laughs> in this crowd? Sure. I... What crowd? Look, there's a little 
job I have to take care of. Be right back. Cardella. I don't know how you did it. We've been at the Scardella for over two years. I, I don't... I still don't see how you spotted him in all that crowd. Well, Sarge, I wanted to be alone with Evelyn, even though I know you don't approve. So, I had everyone disappear, and there we were, Evelyn, Scardell, and me. You had everybody disappear? You want me to believe that? It's the truth. Now, look, you! You stop this nonsense, or so help me, you're gonna be driving a, a garbage truck, you got it? Got it. Good! <laughs> disappear! Hurry up, will you? Don't you move! Care of the driver. Wait a minute! Where were you going? Oh, hold it right there. Hey! Drop your gun! Shoot! For God's sake, shoot him! First thing tomorrow morning, you go back to the firing range. You never even hit him once. Let me have those cuffs. Get him up there! Come on, back there! Come on! Super, super! Super, super, super! What made you suspect that there was a robbery taking place here, uh, Officer Dunlop? Oh, well, uh, uh, my partner and I, uh, we were passing by the supermarket, and, uh, well, the first thing you know, uh, well, we spotted the suspect sitting in a, in a getaway car, and, well, uh... Well, this is one of the most... Uh, thank you, Chief. Anything you would uh, care to add, Officer Speed? Not really. Sergeant Dunlop has said it all. I'm just fortunate to be teen with such a man. Chief, you must be awfully proud of these men. Well, I'll tell you. It all comes from years of dedication, hard work, and a city that I've lived in all... Paradise! Yeah, boss? And Those two cops are getting too big for their bridges. <laughs> Why worry, boss? There ain't a cop alive that can pin anything on you. Everything you do is legal and above board. <laughs> you got the richest fishing business in the Gulf. <laughs> yeah. Call the Barracuda. I want a progress report. Sandy! Mr. Torpedo's on the phone. Yeah, hello, boss. Yeah, everything's going like clockwork. Yeah, we're shipping out a hundred grand's worth of George Washington's right now. Hey, Sarge. It says here that your Rosie LaBush is making a comeback. Did you know that? Sure, I knew that. <laughs> I know everything about Rosie. You would. Like a cup of coffee? Yeah, black, please. <laughs> 